Hey everyone, Ken and Gina here. Hola. We are on our beautiful farm in central Portugal. Uh, today I actually have a bit of man flu. Um, so I've taken some paracetamols. And he's feeling sorry for himself. I'm feeling a little bit sorry for myself, <laughs> but we're going to push through because it's a beautiful day. We're standing in a field, all of the flowers are starting to come up for spring, and we're surrounded by bees. Busy bees. Now we were given these awesome raised beds by a company called Vegega and over the last couple of episodes we've been trying to set these up so that we can create a vegetable garden. And we are finally there. Today we're going to be putting some nice compost and manure on the top of these, making a nice planting substrate and we've even got some veggies that we're going to start planting. First things first, let me get some compost and manure. We've got a bunch of bags of universal compost and we've also got some horse manure. Now to fill these beds up, last week we got a delivery of this stuff. This is basically what they call terra preta here in Portugal. Um, this stuff is actually quite brown and sandy. It's not quite black earth as it should be, but we had a whole bunch of these tubs that needed filling and uh, it was going to take a lot of stuff. Now normally when you fill up a big raised bed like this, to save money people will um, They'll take like old logs and branches and twigs and all sorts of stuff. They'll stick it in the bottom and then you only need a little bit of soil on the top. Now we've obviously filled these all the way to the brim with this stuff. Fortunately this stuff is quite sandy, um, so it's going to be very well draining. It's going to be good for things like carrots and potatoes. Um, but whenever you fill a bed, you can see there's a lot of subsidence where it's actually sinking. And uh, you can actually just push your hand straight into it. I don't know if you can see that. But I mean, I can just push a hole straight down. Right, enough talk. Let's start filling these up. And here we have some horse poo, which should be pretty good. Very, very tasty stuff, this. <laughs> For plants. This looks and feels amazing. I think what we should do is also mix in some of that sandy stuff with this, just to help it be a little bit better draining. Look at that, my hands are a nice chocolatey brown colour. Yesterday we went into Fundao to a shop called Eco Campo to buy some plug plants and they were super helpful in there. First of all we're going to lay them out just to see what they look like and if the spacing's okay. We've realised that we've actually left some of these plants at Eco Campo yesterday, <laughs> which is a bit of a disaster. What we were trying to do was we wanted to plant this up with stuff that we actually use quite regularly and salads and things like that. And then plant the first one up and then slowly sort of rotate. So instead of planting them all up in the same go and they're all ready at the same time, we can have one tub ready while the other tub's getting ready and vice versa. So what we've ordered are some red onions, which are quite good in salads and things like that. And on this side over here, we have some brown onions. So we have a mixture. We also have some rocket which we use in salads and things. We have some beetroot. Uh, we have two different types of tomatoes. And um, peppers. we have some peppers. These are all red peppers. And then these over here are carrots. And we were supposed to have three different types of lettuces as well, um, but we've left those at the shop. So that's a bit of a disaster. So we found out that these are all good companions for each other. Onions, carrots, beetroot, uh, lettuces, well we've got rocket here, but I'm sure it's very similar. Um, these all grow very well together. And so the way we've laid them out is we have two rows of brown onions going along this way, two rows of red onions going this way. We've got carrots on either end, and then we have rockets and some beetroot. And I think that should be good together.
Cool, so Gina's just finishing off the last little bits now and we've trying to spread them out all nicely and uh, I think this is going to work pretty well. Right, let's get some some good quality topsoil in here. So we're going to be planting some red peppers into this one over here. And as you can see, we've got a nice mixture of horse manure and compost. They're heavy feeders apparently, so they're going to need lots of nutrients. So missing out on those lettuces kind of messed up our planting plants. We actually also have five tomato plants that um, we didn't pick up. So I think we left those at the shops. Um, so what we've had to do here is we've put um, five pepper plants along this six foot uh, row, of, like over here. And over time, we're gonna add some stuff. So we're gonna add some like dill and fennel and um, we're gonna try and find things that are companions to go with these. And uh, that's the beginning. We actually found the other five, so we do have 10 tomato plants. The problem is we don't have the thing that we want to plant them in ready. This is what we want to plant the tomatoes in. It's really big and what we want to do is build like almost like a, a frame around it so that the, like the tomatoes can grow up and we can fit quite a few in there I think. We haven't quite decided where we want to put this yet. I'm not entirely happy with this positioning so um, we're going to basically have those tomatoes inside a pot and then we're going to transplant them in here once we know exactly where this is going to go. I kind of like its position here next to the greenhouse but the problem is until we have our irrigation system set up it's going to be much easier to just have everything that needs to be watered along this row over here and so if Gina has to walk with the hose pipe and go around and water this it's a bit of a pain and so for now we're just going to have them in pots as soon as we have figured out exactly where that round tub's going then we're going to take these and we're going to transplant those and uh, that should be pretty cool. It's been a couple of days and uh, it's time to get back into the veggie garden I've still got a little bit of man flu, I've still got the sniffles, I'm still feeling a little bit sorry for myself. I'm not sorry for himself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's time to get cracking with this. Today I want to tackle the greenhouse, it's looking very scruffy. This is what the greenhouse looked like before. And while Ken was suffering with man flu, I decided that I'd come out here and show him lots of sympathy and dig out all the weeds and dig over the soil so that we could prepare this for planting. So I am facing south. The sun comes up in the east in that direction. It works its way across the sky and sets in the west. And uh, we have some plants that we plant in the veggie garden here that basically can't deal with that really hot summer afternoon sun. So that's why we set up the shade cloth. It allows the plants to get a little bit of sun in the morning time. And then as it gets to the afternoon and starts to get really hot in the very middle of summer, then the plants that are in here can get a little bit of shade. We put the shade cloth up last year and as you can see it's getting a bit frayed and tatty. It also is quite saggy and kind of bows in and stuff like that. So I think I've got an idea to stop that from happening. All right Cena, let's get snipping. Now when we first set this greenhouse up um, it basically blew away in the wind a couple of times and uh, what we found the best way to secure the greenhouse is this. I took a couple of fence posts, hammered them into the ground and then I've cable tied um, the corners of the greenhouse into the ground and now we've had some extreme winds like well over 100 kilometers an hour and the greenhouse has basically stayed put. Right let's get this old cover off, let's get a nice new one on. Obviously we've you know spent a lot of time, effort and money on this new veggie garden so we want it to look good. But don't worry, we still will use this elsewhere. We're not going to throw this away. We are going to recycle this. Now, this is the idea that we have. Um, basically, we got the string. Unfortunately, they only had the string in this white and they also had it in like a sort of electric blue color. 
and uh, what we're going to do with it is we're going to wrap it around the poles like this and we're going to wrap it and wrap it and wrap it and then hopefully that's going to stop the fabric from sagging inwards. Um, so I've wrapped it around and it should give us a nice framework um, to balance that cloth on the top and stop it from sagging. is coming together nicely. We've got a fairly neat edge going on over here that's been cable tied on and uh, we do have a little bit of overhang that's what we're going to deal with in a bit. So we've kind of doubled it up so that you don't get a fraying edge on the end and then we have the hem of the fabric on this side here so we shouldn't have any fraying on that side. And all we need to do now is trim off this side and trim the bottom off on that side. So my glamorous assistant with her pair of scissors is going to do this section here We've decided to pull it straight here. We're going to make a cut there and we're going to make a cut there. In the past, what we've done with this little skirt that you get left over with is we've just buried it underneath the ground. The problem is, is that when the wind blows, you get lots of pressure in there. It actually lifts it up and blows all of the sand off. So Gina's decided this year, she's going to, she's going to pull it in and under and then kind of tidy it up on the inside. All right, we have job done. Now that is looking a lot better. So we've managed to get a nice neat edge. We've managed to get a neat edge around here. We've used cable ties to go all the way down. The problem is I ran out of cable ties, so we have this last section that hasn't been tied up 100%. I only had a couple more so I could only do that side and this side. I'll get some more. You can never have too many cable ties. I must say I'm quite happy with the way that this has turned out. It looks really good now. We don't have any of that sagging because of the string on the inside and uh, I think I'm gonna have to put some string on the outside to stop the wind from blowing in the other direction. And the reason I didn't do that with the white string is because I didn't think the white string would look too good on the outside of this dark green material. So I'm gonna try and find some green string or some black string and uh, yeah, I think that's going to look a lot smarter. Just wanted to say a massive thank you to Beverly and for the beautiful card and the very generous gift that you gave us. And the gift has gone towards all the flowers and seeds that you see in this week's episode and some little gems for my lady garden as well. Thank you very much, Beverly. This week's episode is proudly sponsored by Man Flu. <coughs> this is the last tub that we have to fill. The reason we haven't filled it yet is because we just had no clue where to put it. We've got four of these uh, Vegiga tubs going along here. We've got the greenhouse over there. And we were thinking of putting it in this corner. Uh, but now, I don't know, I think it's better in this corner. The original idea was to put um, the avocado tree inside this round tub. And the reason why we wanted to do that is so that we could basically raise the avocado tree out the ground a little bit so that it's taproot that's um, going to go down about a meter or so so that that taproot um, has a better chance of having better soil around it. And then we were thinking, okay, why not put some tomatoes in here? We can build some kind of a, a wire frame and, uh, and then we can have a whole bunch of really tall tomato plants. And I think that could possibly have looked pretty good. But now that we've got this greenhouse kind of set up, I think this is where all of our climbing stuff's going to go. So we're going to put all the tomato plants in here, cucumbers and things like that. And what that's going to give them, it's going to give them lovely sort of morning sun. And in the really hot summer afternoons, it's going to give them a little bit of shade. They're still going to have lots and lots of light in here. So don't worry about that. 
uh, in the summers, it gets so hot that a lot of these tomatoes were just exploding or cracking in the actual heat. So all of the juice inside gets so hot that it just expands and expands until the fruit cracks and bursts open. So I'm thinking that this shade cloth is going to help those, you know, help those cucumbers and help those tomatoes a little bit. And so the plan is we're just going to fill this up now and we're going to put flowers in it. So we're going to have a lovely flower bed just over here in this corner. And that's what we've decided to do. I mean, we were thinking for weeks and weeks and weeks, what on earth are we going to do with it? And then the avo tree, we're going to put it over here. So if we put it into the ground over here, it's going to get um, a little bit of sort of a wind barrier. So all of its leaves don't get completely blasted off in the wind. We can get some serious winds here. And for the last three years that we've had this avocado tree in a pot, if we don't give it some shelter from the wind, it literally loses all of its leaves and that's going to kill the plant. So hopefully having this on the side, means that it's going to be a little bit more sheltered and uh, it's going to get that full afternoon sun. The avocado trees do like a lot of sun. So we're going to dig a hole, we're going to fill it with some really good stuff and uh, we're going to plant the avo right there. Eddie, are you going to inspect the hole I've dug, hey? What do you think of that? Is that pretty good? What do you think you can do better? I think Eddie can do better for sure. He's definitely better at digging than I am. My boy. So this is the other tree. We bought this um, when we first got here. So almost, I don't know, three and a half years ago, almost four years ago. It's even starting to grow some bark, which is pretty cool. Because when we got it, it was like a little whip. It's very misshapen though because of the amount of times that it lost all of its leaves and you can see on the top here it's been almost like frostbitten um, so yeah it really needs to go in the ground So I've mixed up some pretty good soil here and uh, let's get that in the hole. Now my mom's a very keen gardener. She's always had the most amazing flowers and her garden's just always been ridiculous. Um, obviously I don't have all of that knowledge and information like what she does. But uh, one of the things that she did teach me is that if you're going to transplant something, you must always soak the roots. Don't do it when it's dry. And as you can see, this is very dry in here. So let's give this a good old soak. What's going on, Eddie? What's happening? Working's waiting for the avo to soak up all that water. I thought I'd tell you about some extra stuff that I planted in this. I put some seeds in, I put some lettuce seeds in, some radishes and some spring onions. We bought the plug plants because it was a bit of a late start for us, but I am really looking forward to the seeds coming up. Right, time to take this out. It's quite well established. It's been in here for a few years. Um, oh, it came out pretty easily. There we go. Look at those roots. So yeah, it was very, very pot bound. Now I heard that these have a taproot system, but by the looks of it, those don't look like taproots. Okay, we've got little broken bits of terracotta in here that we used at the bottom of the pot for drainage. So I'm just going to try and get those out first. Um, and yeah, it doesn't look like a taproot at all. That is definitely not a taproot. So I don't know, maybe you guys that know um, avos can tell me what's going on here because I always heard that avos had a taproot. Right, let's get some of this nice soil blend. We've got horse manure, compost, a little bit of uh, the terra preta, that really sandy stuff that we bought. And uh, I think that should make a good mixture. Right, let's just get some water in there. Right, avo tree, let's do it. Let's plant you up. And we'll be adding uh, some more soil to this if it starts to subside and sink in a bit. I think that's a good start. What do you think, avo tree? A little bit of a shower? Nice. Right, now it's time to fill this big old tank up. Last week's video we did a lot of digging 
and uh, shoveling. So I'm not going to bore you with all of that now. Let's fast forward to the good part. Whew. I probably shouldn't really be doing this kind of thing um, when I'm not feeling well. But maybe I'm going to sweat it out. Okay, so we've taken this terra preta stuff that isn't really terra preta. It's nice and sandy and it's very well draining. So basically, um, when you actually do water it with the hose, the water goes straight through. It's kind of like sand. And then we're going to use some nice, good quality compost and horse manure on the top. And then we can plant some flowers. Just mix this all in. Try and get a little bit of the terra preta, compost, manure and everything all in together. And this is how you know you've done it properly. Look at those chocolatey fingers. Right now it's all green and lush around us and it almost looks like we have a lawn going all the way around the house. But it's not really a lawn, it's just a mixture of like chamomile and I don't know different types of green manures and all sorts of different things. And in the summertime all of this just goes back to dust. There's strict fire regulations, so you can't have um, fields full of grass and stuff like that because, you know, when the summer comes and it hits like 40 degrees, all of that grass just turns into like, like straw and tinder and stuff like that. And the slightest spark will set it all up and you'll have a massive fire. So you've basically got to cut all of the grass down and uh, yeah, we can't have these big, beautiful green fields anymore. And so this is why in this little area here that we fenced off for our veggie garden, this is why we want to plant lawn here so that in those hot summers we've got a beautiful green lawn that's being irrigated we've got all of our veggies over here we've got some like little trees we've got flowers and all sorts of things and it'll be a lovely area to sit just outside the house in this little bit of shade that the house gives now gina's been dying to get these grass seeds in the ground i've been holding off because i know that we've been walking all over this area so much while we've been doing this and i didn't want to disrupt them so we're finally at the stage where the seeds are going to go into the ground. Uh, Gina's raking up the ground a little bit. I'm going to get the wheelbarrow, fetch some terra preta, put that down here so we have a nice substrate to put the seeds onto. Dog dog, we are making a beautiful green lawn for you. Now we won't let the dogs onto this green grass unattended because they love to dig holes. But when we're chilling out in here, when we're sort of lying in the sun and sunbathing and eating lunch and doing all of that kind of stuff, then the doggies can come in and we'll keep a close eye on them. Um, I dropped the camera and I've broken my mic. I've broken the clip for, for the mic. It's just about to fall off the camera, which is going to be a disaster. You can see the actual plastic part has broken and snapped. And it's a clip, so I can't really just glue it. Looks like I'm going to have to get a new one. So Gina has finished raking a whole bunch of terra preta. We have a lovely sandy substrate to plant some seeds into. We bought this at AgriLogia. So this is basically grass seed, resistant grass seed, that's um, for frequent use for walking over and apparently this will do 125 square meters. So we should have enough to do most of it, hopefully. So Gina's been waiting to do this for ages. She keeps going like, when can we plant the grass seed? When can we plant the grass seed? And uh, now is finally time. Mm, look at all these little grass seeds. Awesome. It's the very last, the last little seedlings. And these are going to go down here just by the gate. And people are probably going to ask us why we don't just put um, bark or chips or something down there. Well, to be honest, it's because the dogs and everything are going to pick up those chips. They're going to take them onto our lovely lawn and they're going to eat them and they're going to leave mess everywhere. When the wind blows, the wind will blow through here and blow, you know, chips and everything all over the lawn. And I don't want that. And 
I also made spaces between these so that I can fit my lawn mower down there. Now we have to figure out how we're going to water the lawn. I've got this sort of agricultural style sprinkler. So this should do the job. Uh, I still love the sound. This is a sound that brings me back to my youth when I'd be in the Western Cape somewhere like in the Karoo or somewhere and they would be watering their lawns with these sprinklers and they have a very distinctive sound. Alrighty then. Cool, so this thing works pretty well. Um, it was a real pain to set it up actually. It wasn't working properly and we had to get it at like the right height so that, um, you know, we don't really want it wetting the wall of the house or anything like that, but we wanted to kind of reach the perimeters, you know, hit the trees, do a little bit of the veggie garden. Well, I'm about to get wet. And yeah, it works pretty well. Now the grass is gonna take about six weeks. So I wanted to kind of set this up so we can set it and forget it. And uh, at some stage we'll get a watering computer on there that turns it on and off. And these beds are gonna be watered by hand for the time being. Uh, we've got a hose pipe that we're gonna run along here and just every day we can just come and water it by hand. Um, but I think the best idea is gonna to be to get some kind of drip irrigation and like maybe even sink something underneath the ground, some kind of pipes that have holes in and drip water just underneath the ground and then get some mulch on the top here to stop evaporation. So I think that'll work pretty well. And thanks to Beverly, we've got some sunflower seeds. I love sunflowers. We grew these last year or the year before and they're absolutely massive. They've got like big dinner plate sized heads and the bees absolutely love them. And we've also got some reddish ones, which I think will be really nice around the outside of the grassy area. I think they're gonna make it look really pretty. Um, but yeah, we planted these at the perfect time because tomorrow we have some rain and um, when that rain comes down, it's going to really give these seeds a good old soaking. The husks are going to open up, the seeds are going to spring to life and in the next six weeks or so, we should have a lovely lawn here. I can't wait. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And uh, you let us know what you think uh, in the comments below and I'm sure there's going to be people telling us that we've done all sorts of stuff wrong, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we have, but... Yeah, Gina and I aren't experts or anything like that. Uh, I mean, the only expert that I know is actually my mom. I mean, she's exceptionally good when it comes to gardens and gardening. I know she loves these programs and she loves seeing stuff when I'm doing stuff in the garden. So, you know, some of the stuff that you taught me over the years has rubbed off, but I'm not an expert. No, we do so, Yeah. So let us know what you think. And uh, if you want to help support these videos, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, um, join us on Patreon. Uh, have a look at our Facebook and Instagram pages where we post up extra stuff during the week. Yeah, different stuff. And we'll see you next week, same time. Bye. Ciao.